Welcome back, everybody. Time for some more Grand Tactician, the Civil War. And as always, thank you guys for all the great feedback. I can tell you're loving this series as much as I am, and so I'm so glad to hear that. We're going to continue on today. I've got, as always, at the top of every episode, a couple of new patrons to welcome and say thank you uh, and uh, get your units in here. Kevin Pratt, yours is first. Uh, he uh, is the only one of his family who was born outside of Michigan. He said he was born in Tennessee, and he asked for a unit called the Tennessee Volunteers in the Army of Tennessee with green uh, shirts and red trousers. So here you have it. They're going to be here. Uh, they're going to be Braxton's Brigade in Warren's Division of the Army of Tennessee. It's only going to take them about a week to get there. All right, and here under Colonel John Whitfield in Ewell's Division of Longstreet's Corps, Army of Northern Virginia, Jackie Littlewood has requested uh, the 1st Armagh Irish Brigade uh, with green tops and uh, trousers, and uh, he's Irish and uh, American, and as you can imagine, he said it so, means so much to us, all the support in the USA. Uh, so... Uh, we're glad to do that for you, Jackie. Shout out to all those uh, here in America that have Irish roots like myself and uh, as well as all of our friends over in Ireland. So glad to add that one. All right. And our last one for today is for Rave, Raven Echo 7. Uh, and he requested uh, CSA German Legion, uh, blue coat, gray pants. And so we've got those for you there. And uh, I'm glad to do that. They are also going to be in the Army of Tennessee. They're a Tennessee volunteer group. So this whole division under Warren now is going to be the uh, 2nd Battalion, uh, 504th, uh, the Tennessee Volunteers, and then the CSA German Legion, as well as over here we've got Mills Brigade, uh, and then Nelson's Redcoats. So that's about it. Uh, we're ready to dive in today. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. We've pretty well driven him out of Tennessee. Uh, we do need to kind of hang tight with the Army of Tennessee for now because we've got uh, a lot to uh, refill there. Only 9,800 men on hand. Going to be 21,000 when the time comes. And when that time comes, we're going to start moving into Tennessee or into Kentucky with the idea of taking Louisville and getting Kentucky to secede and join the Confederacy. Likewise, we're going to start making our push now that we've won the Battle of Fayetteville. Uh, we have an opportunity now to push with the Army of the West up into Missouri with the idea of taking St. Louis. And I would imagine that would drive the Army of Mississippi north. And if that happens, then we get to move north with our armies here. Uh, he's going to have to, at some point, start shifting back west because he's loading up in the east. And hopefully he moves back west to meet the threat there. Uh, here's the situation as far as numbers go. He's got 516,000. I've got 394. Of course, he's got almost a 10 to 1 advantage in Navy tonnage, but I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. All right, so my shift is now uh, well underway. We're shifting the Army of Tennessee into southwest Virginia. Uh, and then we're going to start shifting elements of the Army of Mississippi throughout uh, southern Kentucky. Uh, so we're going to shift with the Third Corps under Breckenridge over toward London. We're moving up with the 2nd Corps under Joe Johnston into Bowling Green. Uh, we'll move the headquarters of the Army of Mississippi up here somewhere. Disaster Galveston. So he's hitting me with his Navy everywhere, and he's going to really put the clamp on with the siege or with the, uh, the blockade. There's not a lot I can do about that right now. Let's take a look at Johnston's perks that are available. 50,000 men and 3 Corps. Uh, let's go with the skilled cartographer and see how that works out. Uh, so we've got our, our garrisons here. Donaldson, I'm going to use the uh, land torpedoes for these garrisons. This is Army of Mississippi here. We're just going to move the headquarters up. And then the first corps, 19,000 strong. Uh, we do still have the Army of Mississippi, 21,000 strong to deal with. So I think maybe we'll start moving that way with Anderson's corps. All right, I think this is probably where we're going to see our action. Uh, this is going to be Longstreet's Corps making contact with the Army of Tennessee under Grant. Uh, Jackson's Corps is in range uh, to be able to come to the sound of the guns and support them, though it'll be a bit of time before they get there. Uh, we just need to kind of hang on until those reinforcements arrive. But likewise, the Union's going to get reinforcements too. Uh, he's shown a total possible of 88,000 men when everyone arrives against our 64,000. So this is going to be a proper uh, Eastern Theater battle right here. This is by far going to be the biggest battle I've ever fought in this game, at least in a campaign. Uh, so I'm pretty excited about this, actually. 
So here are the starting numbers. We are looking at 41,000 men for us, 44,000 for Grant. And uh, we've got 1,100 wounded to start with, not a huge deal. Uh, I do want to look and see when we can expect reinforcements. 31 hours. Uh, so we're looking at, what's that? Seven hours plus a day. So we're looking at about 2 p.m. on April 8th. So we're fighting this pretty much around the time of the historic battle of uh, Shiloh. So that's kind of interesting. Now, can we see anything about Union reinforcements that might be arriving? Okay. So we've got 18 hours before the Second Corps arrives, 19 hours for the Fourth Corps, and 26 hours for the Department of Virginia. So this is as good as it's going to get for me. I need to find Grant, and I need to whip him fast on the Antietam battlefield. All right, well, I've been trying to send out my cavalry to try and spot him it looks like he's coming down the shepherdstown pike right toward the city of or the town of sharpsburg uh, i've just issued new orders to all of my divisions to move up from the positions that i first occupied now i'm kind of second guessing that only because i don't think we're going to get there in time but we'll go ahead and see it's yule i'm mostly worried about because there's no way he'll make it where i've instructed him to go so let's go ahead and start pulling back from those positions. We'll give Yule a stop order. While well, he's close. Okay, so it looks like we're going to make contact right in the town of Sharpsburg to start. Looks like the majority of his army is still back near the Potomac River. And if that's the case, that actually is ideal because that means I can meet and crush uh, these advanced units. And what I've decided to do is I'm, I'm sending Jones's division out and around over near Nicodemus Hill. I'm going to have them come in up here on the other side of town while we engage most of his army here. Okay. Let's see who's making initial contact. Looks like we've got the VMI cadets under Beauregard. AP Hill's brigade here. Wilcox's brigade here. Interesting to see Beauregard commanding a brigade when he was an army commander when the war started. Right, let's keep Beauregard facing the right way. I don't know where Hill's going, but no, you stay here, dude. Forno, let's get him up over here. We'll keep Armstrong's cavalry right here in the center for now. We're bringing up the artillery. It's going to take a little bit of time to get this formation in order. Whenever they get caught kind of in the middle of a movement, it tends to make for wacky formations. But three brigades firing on this one, we ought to be able to deal with him pretty, pretty uh, readily. Men of Rune only have 1,400 men. We're going to have to get them reinforced. I don't remember them taking casualties before, but maybe they did. Artillery's coming up. Yeah, Williams is going to break pretty quickly. Alright, we'll bring Armstrong's cavalry up right here. That's Luke's cavalry which still has shotguns. We need to get them some better weapons. All right, we're still waiting on Jones to move his men up over here. And then Yule's going to come in. He's supposed to come in on the town there, but I'm actually going to move him over here because we've already got Reigns' division in town. By the way, if you haven't seen the latest updates on what the patch is going to have, there's another patch about a week away. Among the things that will be in the latest patch is the ability to mo manually move your commanders uh, by holding down the Alt button, which the Alt button, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover that once we get the new patch. I'm going to do a, a tutorial on uh, tactical battles, this screen, so to speak. Um, 
And that's one of the things we'll cover in that is how the alt button is kind of your catch all for a lot of things you want to be able to do and do quickly alt and shift. Uh, they have some nice kind of hot keys for that stuff. Uh, but I'll wait until that update because that's going to change how some of those things take place. It's also supposed to address address the uh, the bunching up that the AI tends to do with his armies where they kind of all ball up in one spot. It's supposed to begin addressing that. A number of other things, uh, too many to mention, but I've listed them over on the Discord channel uh, that we have, uh, and I'll, uh, I'll post a link at some point to that. Uh, they're always adding new things, so what, what it's showing is uh, in the patch today is far from what it will be when it's finished. I think we'll get these guns right in here in Early's division. We're still waiting to kind of see what he does. Okay, just checking on the update now uh, to see where we're at. Uh, we're 15 hours away from his second core arriving, 16 hours from the fourth core arriving. So basically we've got 15 hours to defeat Grant. If we don't do it in the next 15 hours, uh, he's going to get vastly more men to, to fight me with. Uh, and then we kind of have to hang on until we get our reinforcements. Uh, so for some reason, Gardner, the New York Copperheads, uh, in advancing up to this position, decided to march right through the middle of his lines. And uh, I didn't really do anything about it. I just allowed them to continue. I'm moving this division here under Reigns over into position on the right of Early. And then Yule's division is getting into place right here. I don't know what Wood's doing, but I think we're going to have to go deal with them. So let's bring the Super Duper Stormtroopers down. Instead of taking position where they're headed to be my flank attack. We're going to allow them to engage this Union Brigade that's right here. Need them to get into a battle line though. Right now they're, they're still marching in column. Here we go. Alright boys, let's engage. I love that the front line kneels down and they get into that uh, firing formation. Here comes the order telling them to go ahead and, and change it to long range. There we go. Open up. What are we waiting on, guys? They're loading and loading and loading, but they're not firing. Fire! Goodness. Alright, move up. And let's bring, we've got 485 men under Mumford right here. Let's bring them up to get in his way a little bit. Oh, I don't know what Yule's doing exactly. This town is really just kind of messing with my battle lines. And I think we're probably going to need to move reins forward before too long. But I'm still waiting for Jones to get in position. There, now they're firing. Mumford's only got 485 men, but they'll at least get in his way. How many's Wood got? He's got 1,400 men. These guys are still marching this direction. They don't care that they're being shot in the back and they're leaving dead men all over the field. these guys. These guys at least have infield musketoons. So they've got decent weapons. Alright, just keep marching forward. And we'll just try to get the uh, Mumford's Brigade to hold on. Come on, guys. Get it moving. Alright, we're still waiting on these guys to get in position. Here's Pickett with mixed muskets. I'm just going to move these guys up individually because if I give a division order that's going to include Henry and I don't want it to right now. 4th Alabama will get them moved up over here and then Gardner's New York Copperheads up here for now. I just have to keep an eye on the time. We don't have all day to do this. Okay. Meanwhile, let's see what's happening here. I didn't realize they were that close over here. Yeah, my cadets have leveled up. Iron discipline. 
he only has that brigade. So let's move AP Hill's brigade up. Start firing into the flanks of these two brigades that are moving at me. We've really got to press this attack. But first things first, we need to destroy wood. Now in real life, this probably wouldn't be a good idea because I'd be firing right through his men and probably hitting my own. I'm not sure that's an issue here, but he's got an order coming in. Let's see what they tell him to do. Probably going to tell him to pull out of there. Super duper stormtroopers. How about spirited charge? I feel like this is an opportunity to use that. I'm going to mount these guys up. And then I'm going to have them do the same. This is a unit I may be able to capture if I play my cards right. Because he is all by himself. Really don't know what he was thinking there. How are we doing here, Beauregard? Uh, 74 losses, not bad for VMI cadets. Okay, Wood is crushed. He doesn't appear like he's going to surrender, though. That's okay. So what we'll do now is we'll bring the stormtroopers over as a reserve behind Yule's division, which is going to move forward now. We do have to press this attack. I'm not sure why that's where they went. I ordered them up here. AP Hill, do your job, buddy. Ideally, I would have put VMI cadets behind this fence, but they're doing okay. But we've got to think about the fact that by nightfall, he's getting heavily reinforced 14 hours from now. So, yeah, a little after midnight, I guess it is. That gives me what? That puts me just after midnight. So, yeah, uh, basically, when the fighting resumes, if the fighting resumes on the following day, we're going to be facing a lot more men. This has to be won today. All right, let's push early forward over this direction. Bring all the guns up. I don't know why he's spread out so much. I don't fully understand what he's doing right now. Here's the Polish artillery. Oh, AP Hill's got the uh, got the feud thing going on. That's why he didn't obey my orders. Gosh, just stop. No more initiative for you. Just do what you're told. Alright. I'm just going to tell him to charge. He can't avoid that order. We'll send the VMI cadets in as well. early doing he's starting to move I'm still trying to get Yule on the other side of the of the uh, the town here and that probably means charging into these guns which is what I'm gonna do right now so who do we have here we have the 6th Alabama their job is gonna be to take out Cavender's battery 
right next to them, the first Armagh Irish in their very first combat. Boy, they, they arrived quickly. I just recruited that unit. Let's send them into these batteries as well. Bunch of men wearing green. Both of those units. That's a pretty substantial sized battery, the Illinois Light Artillery. Come on, charge, guys. Let's take that battery out and then let's move Pickett, Jenkins, and Gardner up. Hills Brigade decided not to be a part of that charge. He is driving me nuts. All right, the Polish artillery is up. Let's get these 12 pounders pouring it into these guys. Artillery, do your thing. Let's see what you got. Oh, they're gonna fire this way instead? Really? Probably because of where Hill is. We started coming in from this side now. Who's this, LZ? What's going on with this melee combat? Uh, it's hard to maneuver the camera sometimes. Nice job, 6th Alabama. Nice job, 1st Armagh Irish in your very first combat. Alright, we're pushing over here now. Let's see what the situation looks like overall. Um, so we're still 14 hours away. We want to look at strength now because we want to see casualties, and I imagine they're pretty good for me. Eh, not as good as I thought. Now, I did have 1,100 already, so that's only about 1,000 casualties for me in this battle. Keeps us pretty even numbers-wise. But we've got more guns, so that's good news. All right, so battle lines are really kind of disjointed right now. Let's get Reigns' division straightened out, if we can. Right here. Oh, there's a lot of fire going on right now. After complimenting the Union for their organization in battle in the last episode, it's been pretty bad this time. And I think the difference is that he didn't have time to get where he wanted to be. And he isn't adjusting well to the change in plans. Uh, last episode, I had built a defensive line, and he had time to figure out what he wanted to do and get his men in order. This one, it's kind of everybody kind of arrived at the same spot at the same time, and I don't think he knew what to do with that. So let's see what's going on over here. We gotta get these guys. They're anchoring themselves on the road. Roads as brigade is, and that's not ideal for us. So we've got the Junaluska Zuavs, who were the heroes of the last campaign. Ready to get into action here. Now, once I can drive these guys off, I'm going to need to deal with that artillery. Prior's Brigade has mixed muskets. Spirit of Charge, we only have 1,400 men here. How many men in the 3rd Brigade? 1,500. thought about charging them, but I think we'll wait. We'll let Rally Colston help with the fire there. Oh, the Zuavs have these guys behind them, so let's get turned around. Start firing into the 2nd Brigade. We're going to have 
in a nice little crossfire here. We got the men of ruin here. Yes, that is a Lord of the Rings reference, and I love it. All right, I see another division coming down over here. Let's get Yule moved up. And we'll kind of sit tight with everybody else for now. All right, we drove him off. I might send Luke's cavalry up to go deal with that battery. If I can. So I'm going to send them up, and when they get close, I'll give them a charge order. This may work out. We just got to break enough of Grant's army to where he retreats. And that's another thing that's going to change with the update to the campaign. Uh, I believe if I read that right, they're no longer going to have you, the situation where you're just going to have a basically the, the battle just suddenly ends uh, because the enemy decides to withdraw. He's going to have to actually withdraw to the withdrawal points, uh, which are these points here on the map. Uh, and then there's some sort of timer involved with that too. So we'll see how that all shapes out uh, when the update comes out. But a lot of people have been asking for that. I personally don't mind the way the battles end like that. Uh, it allows the enemy to keep his army intact instead of getting completely destroyed. But, you know, if, if you want to be able to completely destroy the army, then I guess you would be frustrated by that. Better G light artillery in the action. They've got a nice range, so they're able to fire on all these new brigades that are coming in. Who's this here? This is Talia Farrow. That's the Junilis Kazuovs. Actually, I'm going to send these guys here first to deal with this brigade. And I'm going to move Reigns' artillery up. All right, Luke's Cavalry, Let's see what you got. Yeah, I think we can bring Forno around this way now. Yeah, I think Loose Cavalry did the job. And now we can go ahead and turn Junilis Kazuovs around. Get them facing off against this brigade here. Alright, Wilcox, that's not ideal. Forno up. Nice job, Luke's Cavalry. 17 losses. Driving these guys off. Now let's get over here. They're disrupted, so we want to be careful of that. There's going to be a lot of casualties in this battle. Are they charging? They're crazy. I need Yule. There we go. What's the deal here, Yule? I need a battle line of some kind. Get up lined up along this fence. Is that 
that'd be perfect if he actually does it. Oh look, Hill's doing his own thing again. You know what, Hill? Forget you. Do what you want. You need to get the Men of Ruin turned. Oh, they are. They're just lined up along this fence with part of their brigade, that's all. I'm trying to get some cover. Iron Discipline. Although Spirited Charge probably would have made more sense with the Men of Ruin. But we'll take it. Okay. I want to send the cavalry over here to, to prepare to charge these guns. I'm still waiting on Yule to get into position. Let's go ahead and speed up a little bit for now. Who was wounded? Raleigh Colston. Who? Let's see. I believe he was historically killed in the war. Chancellorsville, maybe? I know he was part of Jackson's flank attack there. All right, so uh, pretty substantial casualties mounting up. It's not a huge advantage like I'd like it to be. No, I was wrong about Rally Colston. I think he maybe was um, removed from command at some point. Uh, but he died in 1896. They were both professors, Colston and Stonewall Jackson, at uh, Virginia Military Institute. That's right, because I believe there's a, a scene, and maybe this is histor historic, I'm not sure, but there's a scene in the movie Gods and Generals where they're getting ready to launch that flank attack on Howard's Corps at Chancellorsville. And Jackson says to General Colston, he says, it appears Gen uh, Virginia Military Institute will be heard from today. Lee relieved Colston of command of the division on May 20th. served under PGT Beauregard in 1864 in the Siege of Petersburg, and in early 1865 he was in command of the defense of Lynchburg, Virginia, guarding the uh, railroad line there. Like a lot of uh, Confederate generals buried at Hollywood Cemetery. So now here comes a big attack by him, and it couldn't have happened at a better time because I'm getting my whole battle line into position just in time. So let's get our guns up. My son's being loud upstairs. He's playing on the Xbox with some of his friends. Sometimes I can hear him from here. Okay. Pretty solid battle line right here on this fence. Pretty happy with that. But man, he is bringing the house right now. I'm surprised it took him this long to launch such a full-scale attack. Oh, what are you doing, Whitfield? Turn your line around. Wilcox, you too. Beautiful field of fire for me, though. Assuming that he gets close enough to where some of these brigades can fire on him. It doesn't look like they can. Oh, can we stop doing that, Wilcox? Give you deadly volley if you do. Man of ruin right here on the attack again. Down to just 1,295 men. I was going to say, are these guys laying down? But that's just how many men died on the battle line there. Okay, let's get these guns. And then I'm going to shift Junaliska Zouavs again. You guys. There we go. That should deal with that battery. Alright, let's zoom out and see what's happening. Oh, he's gonna build his battle line up here. Okay, we've gotta watch because Gardner is gonna have a lot of fire coming down on him on the edge of my line. That's the New York Copperheads. They've lost 500 men already. They are definitely gonna need iron discipline facing a lot of firepower. In fact, I'm going to need to help them out or they're not going to be able to last. He's coming at me with everything. So with that in mind, we're going to need to push forward with Yule. I'm 
I'm going to bring Jenkins, 4th Alabama, over here quickly. Double time, boys. Because I don't know how long the Copperheads are going to be able to hang on here. So Copperheads are, uh, I think I mentioned this before, but Copperheads, that was a name that was used for um, Peace Democrats in the North, uh, folks who uh, supported a negotiated settlement with the Confederacy, uh, and in many ways tried to undermine Lincoln's administration to do so. Uh, there was a big congressman, I think I mentioned this too, um, an Ohio congressman named Clement DeLandingham, uh, who was eventually arrested and banished from the United States uh, for being kind of the figurehead of the, of the Copperheads, kind of their leader. And it, it, it was kind of a, a real organization, but it was also a term that was used to describe anybody who believed the way that they did. Man, this is going to be a crazy high casualty count in this battle. Uh, we're already looking at 14,000 casualties uh, for both sides combined. 14% for me, 18% for him. We have taken out 70 of his guns, which is huge, because I've been intentional about going after those those guns on his side whenever I could. We're 11 hours away from the second corps arriving. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. All right. Let's see what's going on over here because I'm a little nervous about the number of men that he's throwing at me in different places. I don't know why Rhodes is facing that way, but let's get him turned around. We'll move early up a little bit. Oh, I was afraid of that. So, in moving, that was my fault. And moving the 4th Alabama over to cover my flank, they advanced in front. I should have given them a series of orders to march back here first and then that way instead of just one order because they went by the most direct route, which exposed their flanks to flanking fire, and they just got lit up because of it. Uh, let's see if we can rally these guys. got to be concerned about that for the 6th Alabama as well because their their flanks kind of exposed here let's get them turned around see Richard Taylor moved up nephew of or no son son of Zachary Taylor? I think he's Zachary Taylor's son. He ended up, uh, I believe, being the last Confederate general to surrender troops. He commanded the uh, Trans-Mississippi Department at the end of the war. Yeah, he's the son of Zachary Taylor. I believe he, was he Jefferson Davis's nephew? Or brother-in-law? Jefferson Davis was related somehow. I think Jefferson Davis may have married twice. I gotta look that up now. Because I think he married a daughter of Zachary Taylor. But she died. Yeah, Sarah Knox Taylor, the daughter. So, um, Jefferson Davis had been Richard Taylor's brother in law for a while, but uh, his first wife passed away. Pickett's all by himself out here now. That's not a good look. Who's there? AP Hill. Still doing his own thing. Alright, looks like things have kind of quieted down over here. So let's bring Early up. Is this Reigns' division? It is. Let's get them moved up. Boy, the Union far from broken. Who got wounded now? We lost another leader. 
Palmer wounded. Alright, we broke Smith. Now he's sending out skirmishers. Man, I'll say this about Grant. His boys do not give up easily. You know what, VMI cadets, I know you've charged once already, but these guys look like they're in rough shape already. Might be an opportunity here. Let's get early right up on this line here. Oh, he's coming down at me again. Jeez, and A.P. Hill still will not obey any order that I give him. He just completely does his own thing. We're going to have to pull him out of there. Maybe I can find a division command for him somewhere. But he definitely can't stay in this brigade. feel like this is I mean this has been a crazy long battle and it doesn't feel like it's anywhere close to being finished let's see how we're doing now on numbers 10 hours away from his reinforcements wow oh there's the victory okay so almost 8,000 men lost for us and 9,500 for him. But it's a victory. We've defeated Grant with Longstreet, uh, well, Lee overall command, uh, in the area around Winchester, Virginia. But that will not be the last battle in this area because there's a lot of men there and there are a lot of units that haven't been engaged yet that won't be retreating. So we're going to have to deal with them piecemeal. The good news is because we drove Grant's army off, he's not going to be able to combine with those Army of the Potomac units to form kind of a super army that I have to face. All right, glorious victory at Winchester. Colonel Helm becomes a national hero. Uh, let's see where we're at. Still 40% on British intervention. Uh, 84 for national morale for the Union, so he is far from finished. Uh, in fact, we've got a long, long way to go. But we're going to wrap it up right there for today. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. Drop a like if you would. And if there's anything specific you want me to talk about or, or address in the game, I'd be glad to do that. Otherwise, we're going to keep on pressing through. At uh, the beginning of every, every episode, we'll continue to put in those new patron units as they come to me. Uh, and I just, as always, want to give a big shout out to everybody who has supported this channel. Uh, whether through Patreon, whether through watching these videos, hitting that like button, leaving a comment, subscribing. I appreciate every single one of you. Be safe out there. I hope you're all doing well. Take care. We'll see you again soon.